I just noticed something. Doesn't Commando have two M's? <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. It's been... <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome everybody to Twin Movies, the show where we talk about twin movies. I'm your host, Chad. Today with me, my co-host is... Maple. And we are joined today by Cinebinge. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the awkward duo. <laughs> George and Simone are joining us today, and we are going to be covering some twin movies. But what are twin movies? Well... Twin movies are films that came out around the same time, normally within a year or two. You can't have twins if they came out five years apart, right? And they're generally made by different studios, so that's not just sequels, prequels, those kinds of things. It's not ripoffs. It kind of makes you wonder, how did these two movies come out at the same time? This is ridiculous. So, the twin movies we're covering today is going to be Commando versus Rambo 2. Yeah. Suggestion by Cinebench. So... What makes these two movies twin movies? Oh, okay. Um, beefcake one man army, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I think the beefcake He's element beefcake. is very important. Yes, that's true. yeah, 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 yeah. Just also, silly, oh, just beefcakey. Yeah, they're both named Johnny. <laughs> oh, that's true. I uh, didn't notice that. <laughs> I didn't notice that either. Yeah. First name John, second name Awesome. <laughs> Yes. For both of them. <laughs> yes, they're both absolutely starring John Awesome. Um, so do you feel in in the spectrum of twinness, how close do you think these two movies are? Do you think these movies feel like they're the same movie or do you think it's kind of their lightly influenced twins? Um, I think they... <laughs> I think that the, the the biggest similarity they have is probably in the the over the topness in mm. uh, in its explosions and its uh, in its body count kind of thing. Yeah. But I think their tone is very different. Like Commando knows what it is, and it's yeah. just go sticking with the silliness. Whereas Rambo is still um, it still has bits of its uh, its predecessor. Uh, uh, in its sort of genetic makeup in this movie, but it's starting to to get that Hollywood '80s uh, mm -hmm. cheesy action, you know, injection. But it's not fully there yet, so it's it's loosely related, I would say. Yeah, almost a proto Commando of some sort, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I don't know that I really have an opposing view. It's just kind of crazy. I believe that. Rambo 2 was the second highest gross movie of, <laughs> right. of that year, right below Back to the Future. <laughs> Which is crazy. Isn't Back to the Future insane? is like one of the best movies ever. That's and yeah. crazy. And so to think that that's the peak of 80s entertainment. Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Everyone saw that. It was like yeah. $300 million worldwide. <laughs> it's like a low end Marvel movie. <laughs> oh my God. Which is insane to me because Commando felt. Be better <laughs> <laughs> which is a good lead in let's let's kind of give the people a rundown a little bit let's go ahead and get into round one the stare down who wants to volunteer to give me a really just super lightning fast quick synopsis of uh let's start with rambo i guess okay uh so we've got johnny rambo <laughs> we know him well we know him from first blood part one or just first blood mm -hmm. and uh, you don't really need any introduction because we already know exactly who he is. Yeah. Um, and still the movie took way too long to get into anything, <laughs> even though we already knew <laughs> who he was. Um, but basically he is serving time for his indiscretions from the previous movie. Um, but he comes and gets him. He's like, hey, you have to go back to Vietnam where all your trauma happened and uh, take some pictures for us. And there's no fucking way he's going to do that. So he ends up killing a bunch of people and uh, roll credits. <laughs> yeah. Sing Single-handedly fights the Vietnam War alone. <laughs> like now, now, I'm a quick interjection. <laughs> Maple, I believe you haven't seen First Blood. Is that right? I have not. The reason oh. I didn't, ooh, the reason I didn't worry about that is I having seen you know Rambo two again for this. I was like, you don't need to. It really just does the. How many '80s movies have started with like, here's the guy in jail. We got to get him out because you're the best and you're the only guy who yeah. can do this. So it basically just had a traditional '80s movie start anyway. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like you can watch Rambo two and Rambo one will still be uh in full fidelity when you get the chance to see that later not to yeah. mention they feel like they're not from the same franchise basically so it's just 
different energy. <laughs> All right, who wants to run me through commando? All right, so you basically, you take 300 grams of Alper's flour, a large <laughs> egg, uh, some diced spring onions, and 260 pounds of prime Austrian chuck to turn <laughs> yeah. into a giant beefcake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you get that beefcake to carry a whole tree, rip out a car seat, <laughs> right. flip a phone booth, right. and then kill every inhabitant <laughs> on a small tropical island while throwing out one-liners in order to save his daughter, who was kidnapped by a mustachioed villain in a chainmail sweater. <laughs> and that's basically Commando. I got to learn a fun thing this time, because I grew up my whole life thinking that guy was wearing chainmail, and I always joked about yeah. how like, he belonged at like some weird goth bar. <laughs> um, but this was the highest quality I've ever seen the movie in before, and mm -hmm. it's actually made out of like paracord. It's like his grandma like knitted it for him. <laughs> like a <It's> crochet. <laughs> Muscle that changes every yeah. muscle sweater. <laughs> oh, it's so sweet. But here's a, here's a little tangent. Um, it's really odd that this happened at the same time because on uh, on on the spinoff channel, Cine Cringe, we just did Fast and the Furious, the first one, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, one of the people in that gang is also wearing the exact same chainmail sweater <laughs> over a t-shirt. And it's I think it's the only two movies that's ever have that outfit. Well, the best part about it is that like it just it wouldn't do anything for you for protecting. <laughs> Protecting you from the weather, like it's, no, it's so useless. It's just a fashion choice, <laughs> and oh. they just must have thought it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that that's a good summary of kind of what's going on. It's basically the very, very late gist of of Commando is they've got my daughter. I gotta yeah. go get my daughter. They, they really sell it with that montage at the beginning too of them. <laughs> yes. Just, oh yeah. <laughs> gotta talk about the montage. Their best life. Like, That's so good. It turns straight '90s sitcom all of a sudden. Oh yeah. Like. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought for for me that was like that movie's version of creating all of the heart that Rambo, like the first one, had. Yeah. They're like, we got to do it real quick. We have yeah. to make sure that. People are invested and we know that he cares and loves and blah, 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 blah. We don't have time. And yeah, yeah. And it was, I remember yeah. when we watched it uh, a little while ago, I was baffled at how quickly it went from like log, bicep, loving father action in like <laughs> yeah. three minutes. And yeah. you're just like, okay. <laughs> Which I think it's worthwhile mentioning that that is something that Commando accomplishes that Rambo, I think, fails at. Mm -hmm. I feel like nothing happens in the first hour of Rambo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't even really feel the connective tissue between the two movies, really, until we kind of get to that last act. And that's when they turn into the same movie, because they both just become the one guy annihilating 50 million people. Right. <laughs> but I would even go further to say that it's done in a much more uh, entertaining way, even in Commando. They kind of switch it up a lot. It's like he starts off where he's shooting all of the faceless goons, but then he like breaks into the shed and he starts throwing blades mm -hmm. at people and like then it's grenade time and it's almost like a, like watching your friend play Call of Duty. <laughs> he scalped somebody with a saw blade with by throwing saw. it. Oh my it's god. Ridiculous. He skewered somebody with a pipe by throwing it, which <laughs> definitely a big gorilla in the room is that or the elephant in the room is that like uh Bennett, he is not a believable threat to Johnny. No. They He's the lamest on. villain I've ever seen. Yeah, guys like us, mate. You see, we're so <laughs> tough and strong, and it's like you're like you got dad bod. You got like these tiny chicken arms. I know. Compared, like they, I was thinking about that. I was like, he does not look like he is prepared <laughs> physically no. for any of this. Yeah. No. It's like was Dolph Lundgren busy? Like, <laughs> there's so many other action stars. He, he was. He was doing Rocky Four apparently. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or get Jesse Ventura, you know, yeah, like a that. predator. Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah, Dylan, no, you not. son of a bitch. <laughs> I was like, Jesse had to be free. Like, what, this, anyone. <laughs> just find some guy who doesn't even act. Like, that character wasn't, like, a hard character to play. It wasn't like the character nailed it. Except, I will say, towards the end, that character goes from zero to a hundred on the crazy scale. For yeah. no reason. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as Johnny's like, let's do this like men. Put your gun down. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's to man. overcompensate. You know? Well, and it just wasn't even set up. If they had set up like, oh, he's insane. That's why no one will work with him. Like, he's mm -hmm. the only guy, you know, yeah. we have to get this guy because everyone else is legit. They won't work with us. So you got to put up with how crazy. No, like they never do. He's like a perfectly normal, calm guy the whole movie. And then just <laughs> loses his mind. I think he also disappears for like 60% of the movie in the middle. It's just like you don't, you just don't see him. There is for a ages. ticking clock yeah. element that is the 11 hour plane trip. And yes, mm -hmm. just about the entire 11 hours there. That is so true. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then yeah. we have 
the kind of, I don't know, kidnappy Stockholm syndrome lady who is not down to clown until she is. And when she's in, she is in. She goes from like, <laughs> I'm going to go talk to security guards so that I can get away like from this the guy. the literal police. To I'm going to push a security guard down the stairs. And then... I know. She's like, I tried to... <laughs> Pushed him out of the way, and then he sh tried to shoot me. It's He's like, chasing me. It's like, what? <laughs> what happened? I'm the plucky comic relief. <laughs> and know. then, like, a couple hours later, shoots a rocket launcher at the police. So, like, she is... She and... Yeah. 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 I, Cindy I like was her. awesome. I like her. Yeah. I like yeah, her comedic great. relief in throughout the movie, which I felt like was something that Rocky, I didn't... I don't think I left because rocky wanted me to laugh right <laughs> i think rocky made me laugh because i was like what am i looking at it's Our, hard to laugh rambo. With. sorry i'm like thinking rocky, <laughs> rocky. i didn't even notice rambo. it because <laughs> i was well that was the thing too when i was watching rambo all i could think is i know that sylvester stallone is in rocky and i haven't seen that and so i feel bad that this oh. is his first movie that i'm ever seeing <laughs> it's a oh man i know it's the first time i'm ever seeing him act in a movie and i'm just like <laughs> it's not that he did a bad job i just don't think it's that i just didn't prefer the movie between the two but i like her comedic relief though um yeah because mm -hmm. it's funny when she shoots the rocket launcher he's like Where'd you learn how to do that? And she's like, I read the instructions. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, Which, oh. like, that is a joke. That's like a setup payoff joke. Like, it, it works. Yeah. yeah. It, um, that, that definitely leads, it's a big question, I think, for this movie, is how much of it, there's got to be a split, because how, what percentage of this movie was actually self-aware? How much of it were they were like, can we even, can we go so far as to call this movie a parody of the genre? Or... Is it just the alpha peak of the genre to the point where it turns into parody on accident? Are we watching The Room or are we watching Scary Movie? <laughs> I think it's closer to Scary Movie because I, I remember very distinctly the first time we watched it on, on Cinebinge where um, I think it was when Johnny arrived at the airport with the two goons and he leans out of the car and he says, I'll be back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. I was like, okay, that has to be Arnold going like, let's call back to terminator blah, blah 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 so which means yeah i think the whole film is very self-aware but it's mm -hmm. hard too because it's not a, that's not the first time or the only time that that's happened either though he mm -hmm. has done those callbacks in other action films as well and i do think that there was he represents a time period of the like movie star where it was mm. kind of it doesn't matter what the concept is it doesn't you know it's not hey yeah. you want to go see blah 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 oh what's it about it's like no who's in it and it's like, oh, right. we're going to go watch yeah, the next yeah, Sly yeah. pick. We're going to go watch the next Schwarzenegger pick. I don't care what it is. You know, I just, it, Eraser, great. It's got Schwarzenegger. I guess I'm going to go see that. So I feel like there was this thing where, like, the star was bigger than the characters they played. So they kind of, it was, like, he was the Terminator, you know? So it's not about the Terminator mm -hmm. saying, I'll be back. It's Schwarzenegger saying, I'll be back. Was Rambo before hmm. Commando? So uh, Rambo First Blood Part Two came out in May and Commando came out in October. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's actually a little tidbit that I learned yesterday while doing some research that uh, the director of Commando actually changed the ending of Commando. Yeah, that's to what try I was. and to try and one up First Blood Part Two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, there was a. Oh, let me see if I have it in my notes. There's absolutely a call out of Ram. Oh, I know what it was. I eat green berets for breakfast. That is a one of the many one-liners oh, in Commando. If anyone okay. remembers from Rambo One, Horatio yeah. uh, from Miami, uh, CSI Miami. Yes, is I like, remember. Oh, yeah. this guy. Yeah, remember in Rambo I One. I remember those green berets. They're real badass. Right. And yeah. So yeah. yeah, Rambo is a green beret. So then Commando is all like, "Oh, I eat green berets for breakfast." Like <laughs> you can't <laughs> convince me that wasn't on purpose. Yeah, so think, it has to be. It I think George is winning me over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that it is kind of a parody mm -hmm. and it and it leans into itself and I do think that because of that fact because I did also do a little bit of research and I found the same one I, I believe that it is too although I think it is still trying to perform as the movie in its genre but it's it's still kind of poking fun I think that's it. how you make the best parodies anyway though yeah like mm -hmm. it still has to kind of have the shape of the thing it's supposed to have yeah and if you just describe the plot it doesn't sound ridiculous you know it's like okay they go and they want him yeah. to do something they're trying to force him they kidnap his daughter but instead of going on the plane flight he breaks out and then he get now <laughs> the specifics of all of that is where it goes insane mm -hmm. <laughs> my man climbing out of the airplane <laughs> and jumping out yeah but again i think that's a big point for this movie over rambo is that again i mean can you even like 
it's so hard to even describe what happens in the first hour before he just starts shooting everybody. It's uh well, he has like a much less exciting airplane experience. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. he gets like hung up and yeah. <laughs> made a point of like saying, I got hung up. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a one liner, there's and, a one liner. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you compare the airplanes from like Rambo to Commando and Commando is just a million times better. It was insane. It was like mm -hmm. they w cranked it up to like 11 and instead Rambo just gets caught and then has to fall. And it's just like, well, oh, that was a little lackluster. So, yeah. yeah. There, um, there's, a, there's an interesting uh, tip that I have also about uh, Rambo Part 2. And I think in a different universe, there would have been a version of Rambo Part 2 that's even closer tied to Commando. And mm -hmm. apparently James Cameron on the first draft of Rambo part two gave him a humorous sidekick and Stallone oh, hated wow. it because he thought the sidekick got all the cool lines. Oh, even better. Um, yeah. Even better. yeah I, I did read about that too. Yeah. Crazy. And then I think, but they brought back Ram. There's like a third Rambo. Is there? There's like, like Oh yeah. There's like a six of them or like one after five or that. six of them. Yeah. Right. Right. And someone then like a character from the second one, I think then becomes that comedic <laughs> sidekick which i've heard that most people don't appreciate that, well, <laughs> I thought that it was a waste mm -hmm. i just could not believe how many helicopter scenes there were in rambo 2 just the same shot <laughs> of a helicopter in the sun helicopter <laughs> rising in the sky another helicopter coming around something and it was just like <laughs> the same but different every time you really can feel the thinness of the script basically <laughs> yeah it's like there's just only so much movie guys we don't know what to do i know yeah that leads us into a spot i kind of want to get into here where i kept a slight track here of the many 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 one-liners from uh mm. yes. nice uh, <laughs> Got some good ones. So, um, yeah, like you said, I'll be back is one of the early ones. That first guy who breaks into uh, Matrix's house, he kind of seems like he's going to be maybe the setup villain. And it's like, oh, we have your daughter. What are you going to do? And he's mm -hmm. like, oh, right? And then, yeah, <laughs> that's like probably the first one is wrong. Bam, shoots him in the head. Yeah. <laughs> he just dies. Yeah. And I think that scene, that line, that scene, that little thing that happens is a good kind of letting you know that... Um, like we this is the level we're going to maintain pretty much the whole movie. I'm not sure there's like five minutes of anything boring in a row. No. Yeah. It, it kept up that adrenaline ride really well. They like, yeah. just kept going. And They're going to always... get an airplane. It's going to get boring. No, no. And you're always <laughs> no. aware no. of the scene, too. Like yeah. where you're at right and where it's probably going yeah very easy to track where yes. rambo you end up in lost in the jungle for yeah. a good little while yeah but yeah you know we got he kills the guy in the airplane uh don't wake up my friend he's dead tired <laughs> oh the best <laughs> yeah. the best we got uh you know hey man remember when i said i'll kill you or uh yeah remember when i said i'll kill you last yeah yeah you did say that oh, yeah <laughs> i lied oh no i guess so good. And he's like this little guy he's like no and then the little girl's like what did you do with sully he's like i let him go <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it just it never stops it's, and even her she's yeah. the these guys eat too much red meat <laughs> like, yeah, she's just yeah. Funny, yeah whenever they're just like fist fighting i do love how stockholm she just gets at a certain point she just is on board she's super like down to help like none of this ever has anything to do with her at any point it could be like okay i think i've done enough or like i'll tell you what just take the car at this point yeah and he stops having to convince her less and less yeah, yeah she's, she's just, just like he's like what does he have her do he like unbuttons her shirt and she's like Oh, he's in the shower. And she's like totally acting it out. Just like, to answer get it Bill into Duke. It. Yeah. yeah, it's like again, she could have just been like, "Hey, Bill Duke guy, I don't know you, but like this guy yeah. has kidnapped me. Can you help me?" But no, she's just ready to rock. She is on full spy mode. She's trying to fly a plane that she doesn't really know how to fly. Like she's absolutely on board. Yeah, until. The common trope of what do they call? Oh, there's a name for it on like TV tropes. It's called like the send Momo away or something like that from Avatar. And it's the idea of like the side character, the plucky side character has to leave when the action really starts in the third act. Mm. And so she like gets left on right. the beach and they are done with her until the end of the <laughs> yeah. movie. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got that little scene where, where Arnold's in his Speedo. Yes. Yeah. Gearing up. Yes. And then she just vanishes from that point on. And then the She's end of the movie, she enough. comes back. Hey, I'm back. It's like Timon and Pumbaa 
Simba. <laughs> like, I got to go fight Scar. There's going to be fire. We don't have time for plucky comic relief. You guys can go hide somewhere. <laughs> the camera is not on you today. Her and Bene almost have, like, inverse camera time. It's like there's the section mm. that is dedicated mm-hmm. to her, and then there's the sections that are dedicated to Bene, you know? So let's kind of move into our little blow by blow round. I kind of want to get, or I'm sorry, our fight round. I want to kind of get into conceptually which movie is handling what in a stronger way. Now, this one's a little tough because I don't necessarily think these movies are extremely similar on concept. I think that you could get into basically, again, just the one man army, which I think most of us have kind of agreed that Commando is just this very fun, you know, big action third act scene. Yeah. is a little samey in Rambo. It was kind of my issue. It was just like, now he flies over here and shoots a whole bunch of people. Now he flies over here yeah. and shoots a whole bunch of people. I guess you do have the earlier part with like the bow and arrow stuff. Um, and the mud. Can't forget the mud. Oh, yes. He goes full predator. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, well, yeah I, I, how do you guys feel about those two different scenes? I mean, if we're talking about the the one man army concept, I, I suppose it depends on which, which aspect. Because if you're talking about just a straight up uh, body count, yeah. I believe Commando has more by that makes sense. By a, by quite a bit. I think it was like a hundred and something bodies, and then Rambo had like 70 something kills. Okay. Um, and also Rambo doesn't kill anybody until like half an hour into the movie, whereas Rambo is mm. or Commando's already <laughs> a dozen right a dozen that. kills in. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm on but the if, plane. <laughs> yeah, but if the but if the concept is comparing rescuing people, because both stories have this oh fair point right. then rambo technically wins because he rescue a lot more people if we're in this very utilitarian <laughs> kind of like body count thing then yes <laughs> yeah yeah if it's just body count but as far as like um like commando it's his daughter mm, fair rambo yes it's his it's, brothers it's POWs. <laughs> it's, yeah it's 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 a bunch of pow's but oh, yeah not people that he actually knew and loved that's true yeah. <laughs> like his daughter <laughs> he loves america <laughs> he, oh, he loves a yeah he does love america <laughs> like that, it's his daughter the yeah end yeah. of the movie he tries to give a speech that is slightly as impassioned as like in the first movie and it just cannot oh, touch it that did not work no not at, not all. at I just all want this country to love us like we love this country it's like i didn't even get a lot of like i love this country out of the movie anyway you know one thing i found really interesting about um first blood part two was that yes he went to vietnam and killed a bunch of people but the actual bad guy was like what's his face murdoch or whatever yeah <laughs> like, right yeah <laughs> who like and then he doesn't he even the bad kill guy. him i don't think right <laughs> No, but he probably made him piss himself. <laughs> yeah, when he, he shot, he shot up the room. He's like, it's like a really suspenseful scene where he's just holding the knife up above him, and then he's, of course he stabs next to him. And, and this is actually one thing I want to get into with these two movies is that conceptually, I feel like Commando is not a about anything basically i don't want to say not about anything but it is because it has a plot but it doesn't really have a deeper message it kind of is just like a fun romp whereas i think rambo was actually really trying to kind of be Mm -hmm. like about something and i think it's got a relatively problematic message i think what it (laughs) the way it comes across to me yeah is war is fine war is cool it's the bureaucrats who ruin it (laughs) which is unfortunate because that's the opposite message of the first absolutely because oh, yeah. Rambo 1 is, is an anti-war movie. Yes, right. Absolutely. And that's what's yeah. so weird to me is that he is notorious for having edited the heck out of that movie because he thinks the first version was unwatchable. And he even mm. cited one of the reasons is he's like, oh, my character's so goofy. He's doing a bunch of one-liners all the time. None of that was working. <laughs> it's like, well, then what happened in the second one? Like, it's so weird that he signed off on the second one after hearing that he, like, wanted to make the first one this kind of, like, deep mm-hmm. kind of interesting movie about PTSD and the toll yeah. of war. And so this one, we've got this weird message, like, even right off the bat when he gets brought out of prison, he's like, you know, hey, uh, you know, do we get to win this time? And it's this idea that, like, by the end of the movie, <laughs> what that seems to translate into is that we would have won Vietnam if you guys just let us war crime whatever we wanted. If I could have yeah. just got a helicopter and shot everything, oh God. we would have won, you know? But the bureaucrats <laughs> didn't let us, so it's the machines. I gotta go back and shoot up all the computers and threaten to stab the bureaucrat guy. I was really, really shocked that uh, Rambo 2 won me over. Oh, like, really? Did it? Okay, I, great. I love Commando way, way more because it, it knew what it was doing and it was more fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Rambo 2, I was like, sure. 
like wow. I already know that I love Rambo yeah, because okay. of the first mm. one. And I was able to cling on to that enough that I cared about him in this one as well. Um, yeah. That's taking out, like take out the politics of all of it. And I was yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, explosions. Yeah. <laughs> like, right, right, right. It was yeah. just, I could still enjoy it. Well, and I didn't I feel like the, par- the politics permeated the whole movie. It was just like kind of at the end, they tag on yeah. this thing. And I think it's because they knew that part of the um, thing that the first movie delivered on is it did have a bit of a message. And so yeah. I think for the second one, they're like, well, we got to do something. So let's kind of tack on <laughs> yeah. a little bit of a theme, mm-hmm. which Commando just has no, it's like, it's, you're not here yeah. for that. You know, yeah, no exactly. Cares. The theme of Commando is it's wrong to kiss your daughter on the lips. <laughs> oh yeah i saw that at the beginning and i was like <laughs> oh yeah hype uh, young Alyssa milano by the way yeah oh you know what's awesome. funny <laughs> someone so when you saw uh guardians of the galaxy someone commented that he names his ship the a Al- the um oh, the milano, milano because he's such a big Alyssa milano fan yeah. <laughs> that was her as a little girl <laughs> getting kissed on the mouth by arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> it's all coming together <laughs> so so with with rambo 2 this one i think this is the, the start of the uh uh, the trend in Rambo series for uh, picking the wrong side in politics, right? Because <laughs> in Rambo three, doesn't he support the Taliban? <laughs> it's early oh days. Oh my god! Yeah, well, when there were still freedom fighters. There's kind of a when when we set them up. There's kind of a fun uh, theory. I think College Humor had that Sylvester Stallone felt like he like worked for the CIA because his whole thing in the eighties was like, yeah. he's going to go back in time and become the world's greatest boxer as a white person rather than as a black person <laughs> with Muhammad Ali, <laughs> or he's going to go back and win the Vietnam War for yeah. us. You know, it's like he's kind of like a movie. He's like Reagan era movie propaganda Which is, guy. Yeah, interesting because. <laughs> And somebody should correct me if I'm wrong, but when I was reading about how Rambo and everything was directed, Sylvester Stallone did a lot of the politics. James Cameron did say in an interview that uh, for Rambo Part 2, he wrote the action and Stallone wrote the politics. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So. Well, then, I, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> yeah. Sounds, so interesting. I guess we're just getting kind of a hint into his idea. And it's also hard because, like, I've got so much 2020 vision on that time period um, and that war. And so it's like he would have been the generation of, like, his contemporaries were fighting that war. And so mm-hmm. they kind of went into something, didn't have very much information on it, and then were sent home. And just all they knew is that they felt like they kind of got screwed but we've got so much data on it now you know post as well as having this 20 year you know war in iraq as well to compare it to so it's very easy to go back and just be like what is up with this movie yeah (laughs) this is so weird very different now (laughs) yeah and the first movie knows how to cover it in a way that doesn't have to get super like pro-war anti-war like you know bureaucrats are the only thing that's wrong with war because war is cool because it's much more personal it's just focusing on that personal cost he is the mm-hmm. every man who came back from that war and all of his friends are dead and he has exposure, yeah. you know, to Agent Orange and stuff like that. You know, it's like that was my dad. Right. And so mm. you don't really have to have an opinion on the politics of it because everyone understands what that personal just cost was. Um, mm-hmm. So for this movie, I guess to maybe maybe that was their plan is they're like, let's try to bite off a little more. But in in, in trying to handle like uh, maybe the next level of maturity and topic, they get substantially less mature in the production. But mm-hmm. as it just totally paid off it was like the second highest grossing movie you know (laughs) yeah still like which is wild for me like my brain (laughs) they have to have uh first blood like the part one to thank for that it's got to be yeah i think that had a lot to do with that yeah yeah Yeah. from what i understand is he had a lot of great movies and then this was kind of where his rocky pun no pun i actually don't i don't <laughs> the I don't rocky know. patch stuff <laughs> so he made so when when he made uh first blood part two there were already three rocky movies out right apparently and he had just oh, wow. finished doing a really bad like musical with dolly parton or something oh wow. <laughs> like, rhinestone it was it, yeah things were <laughs> like you said they, they were getting rocky and they had to take bring back rambo to try and save him <laughs> okay wow fast okay it makes a lot of sense because well how was rocky 3 received because i actually still think that fits in the like good enough category in in the the rocky series I have no idea. I haven't okay. watched the the prequel or the sequels yet. That's the Mr. T one, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. 
Yeah. I actually think the beginning of the end for Rocky is four, which that's like sacrilege because everyone's like, I love four because that's the one that has Dolph Lundgren. But I would argue that Rocky four is like the Rambo two of the Rocky series. It's the one that gets kind of dumb <laughs> and just simple. And it's not very it like Rocky one is so good, not because of the boxing. It is a movie. Mm-hmm. It's a drama that is very compelling with characters. It's a love story. Yeah. It's, it's a love story. Wonderful. As yeah. he said himself. Right. It's yeah. it's a great movie. And so the boxing is cool because that is our magnitude. That is our threat. That's the the conflict that is happening in this movie. And so when you get to four, it really just kind of turns into like beat up the yeah. Russians. Well, and that's another one. Like we go and win the Cold War. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I mean, Rocky, Rocky four is also one Cold that War. has the most amount of memes made out of it. You got the if he dies, he dies or whatever Absolutely. line. And then isn't that also the movie that has a robot in it? No, I think that uh, is that four, is that five. <laughs> that might be five. There's I think that's five. One? Oh, there's a six and seventh technically. Yeah, you count oh, Rocky, no. Balboa, yeah. and Creed and Creed Two. Yeah, yeah. one of the Rocky ending. movies has a robot in it. <laughs> I think that's five. Does he but... fight a robot? No. <laughs> oh, that why there's such like this weird. There's like a weird wrestling scene in Rambo Two on the helicopter, and it's just gonna be ingrained in my brain forever. <laughs> Yeah, him and the like other equivalent guy. it was just guy. sweaty man on man, and it's so long, and they're just, like, choking each other. <clears throat> okay, and so the tension let's is talk like, about this. I'm like, what is going on? We gotta talk about how in the 80s, hyper-masculinity had a tendency to push into homoeroticism. <laughs> yes. It kind of was. Like, I was like, if I was a gay male... <laughs> this would be your favorite scene. <laughs> it's a good scene. <laughs> the, um... The because I have the same thing about Bennett in freaking um, what's it called? Uh, there's so much in a uh, commando, there's so much weird penetration metaphor going on. <laughs> It's like, yeah, don't shoot me. Like, you get up yes. close and stab me. And then he, like, throws the pipe through his chest. And then, oh, yeah. by the way, another great line. Let off some steam. Let off yeah. some steam. The yeah. best. Of course. That's up um, there as one of the best one-liners for sure. Oh, they're just, yeah, like you said, it gets to this point where it's all just, like, sweaty man flesh on man flesh. And it's the grunting yeah. and the mm-hmm. pieces that they're and making. And they're just, like, literally, like, choking each other. <laughs> For a really long time, but nothing's really happening, and I'm like, "Do you want why? it to happen?" I know. I'm like, "Why are we sitting in this for so long?" Like, but it's fascinating. Know. It kind of it's like if you if you really take a look at it, it's like right. What? It's almost like there's a, a upper limit to how masculine something can get before it does. It just turns into like man, it turns is, erotic. It yeah, it was erotic. kind of erotic. Yeah, I was like, they should honestly just kiss. And they were what? they didn't know they didn't know what the upper <laughs> limit was. Get in, just get into it. <laughs> it's predator with the guys like grabbing their hand. You know the 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 you son of a bitch, and they <laughs> grasp hands, and then they start like trying to arm wrestle, and it's like this is just ugh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. right, right. yeah. So it's just so funny. Though. Uh, as a culture how people just didn't know what to, i guess they were just like turn the dial up and keep seeing what happens until like i don't know where more you can go from here well and again even homie like taking his clothes off and he's just wearing the speedo before he's just about to put a bunch of clothes on again in a second anyway it it's like who like you know your target demographic was like 99.9 percent dudes right like Guys. who's the scene for this isn't magic mike you know like, <laughs> yeah no one's That's wives good, even wanted yeah. to watch it That's a good point. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. I never even thought about that. <laughs> yeah, well, we were just we were just talking about this yesterday when we did uh, when we did Top Gun. <laughs> oh, totally the the volleyball is, scene, the volleyball that in in the bathroom when uh, when Val Kilmer just snaps his teeth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what was up with that? Yeah, <laughs> it's like no, they're doing it on the side. No, no one knows. These guys are totally doing. That's why you're so mad. <laughs> Yeah, which I guess it it would be. Fu- I don't know. I don't even know if I wish it was more intentional because there's nothing wrong with it. But no, it's there almost isn't. Like yeah. it's almost to create. It's like, are you doing it on accident? Like, are you doing it mm-hmm. intentionally? To like, me, it comes across comedic because to me, it's it's like. I'm watching the failure of someone trying to make something really, really tough and yeah. masculine, yeah. and they've over done it so badly that it's turned around to in essence kind of the opposite of what that appeal should be yeah, yeah. which is like these guys are definitely doing it now so like, that's not... well and i felt myself even at the beginning of commando 
when you fir- when we first see him all oiled up carrying the log and it's like <laughs> they pan over one bicep first oh they do and then it's like mm-hmm. even bigger bicep it's a minute they like it's <laughs> yeah. and it's the only thing in frame oh, it's, it's not like a good shot of him and you can really see the bicep it literally is just the bicep on it's frame. so good it's so good oh and actually um uh, first blood part 2 the equivalent of that was when uh, Rambo was sharpening his knife and tying his shoes. They had the exact same, like, up the bicep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow, that's exactly. a lot of veins. Like, what? Yeah, <laughs> vascularity. That's I just know. Yeah. good, clean, eaten green, you know? Like, <laughs> and drinking lots of water. Yeah. Hang, they Definitely like, not steroids. <laughs> do a lot to just hang them out for display. Yes. Speedo. When they pull him out of the mud, and he's got, like, all the leeches all over his body. <laughs> and it's just a pan of his ass like coming out of the mud it's i'm like oh okay or uh yeah. when he's on the electric bed or whatever yeah, it's all and shirtless like... and and then again <laughs> the super sensuality of the guy Yo, coming shock. up and like rubbing yeah. the nuts. <laughs> like plucking the, <laughs> the freaking leeches off with the knife he's yeah. like <laughs> it's so sens- it's like bdsm like <laughs> so i think play. <laughs> bink is maybe the best part of that <laughs> So you, you bink off the because it was he was like so just like oh, no. that's so good yeah I felt like I was looking at something I shouldn't be watching like I was like am I still watching am I, yeah, exactly, yeah this seems intimate I'm gonna I'm gonna turn away for a second I know people think of that first movie as being like a big shoot 'em up but like it's really not a shoot 'em up no, yeah, it's no. not at all there's a lot of like quiet time to kind of reflect on the things he's dealing with and what he's thinking about the character barely talks um, and then it all culminates into a monologue that, like, if I wanted to be an actor, it's the monologue I would do at an audition. Oh, my God. Heartbreaking, mm-hmm. right? Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. It's the, I think in First Blood, he doesn't even kill anyone until I don't even know when. Like, when is this? It's I don't think he killed him. Did he kill he, him? He, there's one person, uh, the helicopter guy, but that's, like, half his fault. Yeah, he fell. Oh, he yeah, fell because no, he that's... threw a rock. Yeah. Yeah. So he didn't even kill anybody. Yeah. 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 And yeah. also his his um what he does throughout that movie were a lot more clever. It was a lot more like yes using the environment. He was playing right. a game of Rust essentially. Absolutely. But with with the uh, with, with well. the second one, it was just how big the explosions can be. Mm. Oh yeah. So I mean, I guess we yeah. I've been over. I've been over talking about Commando. I guess yeah. Let's get to that <laughs> that that last half an hour with Rambo. I mean, it's like the bow and arrow with the magic bullet. <laughs> arrowheads that just explode um what if we're talking about what (laughs) if we're talking about letting the guy run sorry yeah no no go ahead go ahead (laughs) he's like letting the guy run away and then he like turns around again yeah and still shoots him it's like it's like that guy is kind of like i think the the bennett equivalent and how much better was the bennett scene handled (laughs) that's what i was gonna say yeah it's like which one has the more satisfying villain kill though right oh yeah in in its over-the-topness right because well, watching I've... him blow up into chunks is pretty. <laughs> it, it is, but it's like you got it all at <sighs> once. Where that Bennett scene, it just goes forever, and it's so weird. And his acting choices were so insane. <laughs> I wonder if the director like pulled him aside and was like, "Hey, so think about it. Like, you hate this guy, right? So you're you're he's making you go crazy because you're so angry." And he's like, I'll, I'll, "I'll kill him! I'll kill him!" <laughs> I don't know if you know what would have worked is if they had 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 a, like a bit right before where he like shoots himself with like adrenaline or something. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, to get just, hype or something. Oh my god. Well, and to point out as well that like just these two men, one of them is like the human specimen of like the perfect shaped man, and then the other guy is like a pretty regular dude. Yeah, <laughs> and, and kind of getting up there in age. I think he even has the line where he's like, "You're getting old, Matrix," and it's like, "Oh, the pot calling the kettle black." <laughs> <laughs> Your mustache ain't hiding anything. My chat did tell me though the mustache gives you uh, extra twenty percent horsepower, so you gotta you know what take that into world. account. <laughs> okay, maybe that's where he saved he saved it. But it's his it's all, turbo it's, it's at all, the end. Oh yeah, his porn stash is just rocketing. Oh god. But, uh, oh yeah, I mean it's uh, like Commando at the end. His like he gets the girl and they like rescue the daughter and they live happily ever after. That's that's like. It's like yeah. a comedy. It ends with a marriage, right? Tragedy mm-hmm. ends with death. His yeah. like his love interest or the lady, like the the woman character, dies horribly at the globally. end, and you're like, yeah. yeah. And it's just like, okay, well, that's a bummer. <laughs> like, yeah. 
it just makes it not as fun and mm -hmm. yeah and that was so contrived like everything about her character was so forced in where mm -hmm. i was talking about structure was so strange one of the things that threw me off was like he meets her and then basically immediately they hop on the boat and she and we're doing this like slow paced like so tell me about your life and what are you all yeah. about i was like this is the scene that happens after they've narrowly escaped some kind of death thing together and he's hurt, mm -hmm. right and yeah. she's like bandaging him and now they start having this conversation in the like second act break then yeah. later they do actually have that scene so i was like so what the hell was this and the because it's <laughs> yeah. so unearned they don't <laughs> know each other at all there's no reason that you know she would be interested in anything about this guy he's just another gi that they sent which by the way even that is so goofy it's like we need to send this guy to go take pictures because he's the best of the best but we don't want him to actually do anything but hey you remember that guy who like took out that <laughs> whole town in oregon or whatever <laughs> like maybe he's not the guy did, is, he, yeah. is he the one who did the m16 <laughs> blew up the entire town by himself yeah i think that's the guy great <laughs> for uh, combat journalists that's the guy we'll go hire yeah, mm -hmm. so goofy yeah. just to take pictures Nothing but right else. when they when they do have that next scene where it is kind of that you know she's like will you take me with you oh i love you oh. and then immediately <sighs> just gets gut like it's like yeah. it's like it's like mean spirited how it was totally done. <laughs> it's like they they were sitting around a table and you're like you know what we didn't have in first blood part one a lady <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we gotta gotta check that box. What if I got also riddled with bullets now. <laughs> horrible. Yeah, yeah, right now. I I also just have like a personal thing against the the Ramble Part Two's uh, love interest, which is the very very of its era, the conquest of the exotic Oriental beauty trope. <laughs> sure. Yes, that, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, yeah. what an interesting. And I'm pretty sure she's a model, and she's from Honolulu. Yeah. Honolulu. Like she's not mm. even. Yeah, she's not Vietnamese. She's not Vietnamese. It was just interesting. We talked about this in chat mm -hmm. while I was watching it, and I was saying how it's been interesting because in the last couple of years, I've heard more and more sentiment from the Asian community in Hollywood saying that lately they are refusing to do basically like stereotypical Asian voice mm -hmm. for movies mm -hmm. that gets called for often and I was like it's interesting because we we're not seeing that so much in the black community and I wonder what the difference is because like everyone who was in Black Panther it's like the vast majority are from LA <laughs> you know and so it's like it's, oh, yeah, it's, and it's all it's all like oh my friend uh, get this man his shield and it's like it's so interesting if anyone is like hey man that's kind of weird like you're not yeah. from, you know i feel like i i think a, a big part of it is that the portrayal mm -hmm. in the past especially yes. with asian characters it's usually a figure of fun of mockery right yeah of right. the of the sexless male or the conquest out of context right. almost yeah it's, it's almost woman. always yeah. that yeah it's always yeah. it's always the the um the quickie mark owner it's always the laundromat you know mm -hmm. person yeah yeah whereas with an african-american character at the very least, there's they can be the main character. Well, our version of it as well at the same mm -hmm. time period was more of the oh hell no nah, kind of guy. That's the Michael Bayism, yeah. <laughs> but yes, right. Rather than the you know uh, come with me, my friend. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's fair. It's 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 still putting on this kind of voice that doesn't represent you. And then there's the questions of like why are you not hiring people from the area who have the dialect kind of thing. Right. But then that also leads you into the counter argument, which is. Obviously, an actor's job is to pretend to be people that they're not. And so mm -hmm. where are those dividing lines? I don't think there can be a hard and fast answer. But there mm -hmm. are those things where it's like, how much away from who I am am I allowed to act before you step into the point where it's like, well, actually, now you need to hire somebody who is actually the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and is it it's more like and then you push people. I feel like, I don't know, you get put you push people uh, into a corner of like it's almost self-deprecating for the well, comedy yeah exactly right and i think that's kind of why a lot of people are saying they don't want to do that anymore so yeah. so back to this character that we're talking about it is a thing where first off i just don't think she would exist in the form that she does anymore today at all yeah um although we also i mean how long ago was uh what was that movie gods of egypt <laughs> when it's all no white idea. ass <laughs> Oh, what? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like Jamie Lannister is one of the Egyptian gods. I think, uh, what's his face? Um, oh, Gerard Butler? Yeah, Gerard, Gerard Butler. Butler is one of the Egyptian gods. Which the also... palest Scottishman. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. It also sends this creepy message where it's like, well, if you are trying to say, well, they're gods, so they're not Egyptians. But then it's weirder because it's like, well, white people are the gods of the Egyptians. <laughs> 
And so, like, with these older movies, it's like, yeah, that's definitely a big thing you, you run into all the time. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember what the world was like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything yeah. was different. <laughs> it, yeah. there. I know there are things that I've seen come back now. Or, like, just stuff that I notice and um, as I'm watching more movies where I'm like, that's that did not age Oh, I got well. a big one right here. It was one of the first notes I wrote down in, um, what's it called, uh, in Commando. <laughs> Like, one of the first lines of dialogue we hear from John Matrix is, uh, why don't they call him Girl George? <laughs> that oh, way, yeah. Well, yeah. Confused. Yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ. Just yeah, coming not out okay. Not yeah, okay. I know. And it's like. He just gave me a haymaker, like, right off the bat. It's like one oh. of the first things he said. <laughs> so I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, it's kind of wild, though, in Rambo that, that they did kill that character. Like, they just literally, yeah. The it's ignobleness a, of it is the part that threw me so yeah, much. It was weird so introduction. I don't know the fo- yeah the follow through of that character was not there. They almost could have just done without her right entirely. A hundred percent. I mean, I think she only is plot important in like the one scene where she sneaks in. But I don't even remember that being true because I think he just breaks himself out because he gets mad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her character had I don't think she served any literally, purpose. It was no. I think she um, was literally there as eye candy. But it <laughs> was her that, first movie. Um, it was from what yeah. I understand. So I mm. I mean just her personally, that's probably a night to have this to be your first movie in the yeah, I'm second, glad she got, yeah. biggest yeah, gross. I'm, I'm complaining yeah. about the writers. <laughs> but the writing part of her of character me, was Oh sorry. Yeah. Oh just part of me feels like and again we're, I'm going back to like First Blood Part One where we talked about like just so much heart and like just yeah. loveliness in like a what like such a crazy movie. Yeah. Um, her character could be like, okay, we need him to to have that heart again. She right. will be his heart, and then she gets shot. Well, <laughs> but like even- maybe it could be like them trying to recreate the magic that they just can't recreate well so think about how you could like the ways you could do this thing it's like okay we start off he's in jail and he feels like he's been punished for the first thing and that his life is over so he's turned into a total nihilist she's the one who kind of pulls him out of the void and brings him back into like hey Mm -hmm. like there is something beautiful out there there's there's a potential of a life with this person maybe you know like hey will you take Mm -hmm. me back with you and like things could Mm -hmm. be different and then when she's taken away that kind of kickstarts his whole revenge thing but like i don't feel like they used her that way at all no they didn't what you just said just sounds like a much better movie to me. <laughs> <laughs> so what always drives me crazy is I'm like, most of these things you can think about for two minutes and you're like, wait, why didn't you just do this? Like, this, yeah. is the, this is the way. But again, I don't really have that with Commando because Commando is just such a psycho movie all over. Like mm-hmm. all, all, it's the weirdest. It's always hard to differentiate sometimes between like Schadenfreude of like the room where you're like, I hate this movie. It's terrible. So I love mm-hmm. watching how bad it is so I can laugh at it. But when the movie almost feels like it's standing next to you being like, ha this is stupid, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're like yeah. I don't know, maybe I really just think it's good. Like again, I guess if I think of it like a comedy. Um yeah. well here, we'll plug Cinecringe. You guys were talking about uh the Wicker Man. <laughs> And your buddy was saying, like, yeah, as, like, a, a a horror thriller, it's terrible. As a comedy, it's great. And I kind of yeah. feel about that with this movie. As an action movie, not my favorite. But as a as basically, like, a parody, light parody of the, mm-hmm. you know, taking the piss of the genre, I think it's pretty great. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it had to be taking the piss. They had springboards when guys got shot. Oh, right, right. <laughs> well, and the grenades. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's grenade went outrageous. You know what? Actually, now that you bring that up, that is the one thing I would definitely give point to uh, <laughs> to Rambo Part 2. It's that it's more competently made <laughs> in terms of its craft. There are so many continuity errors in Commando. Okay. There are so All many right. glaring... Okay. Like, you can see those big explosions. They were clearly just, like, dummies. Just falling over. <laughs> Lots of there dummies was... in in that movie. Yeah. Um. When he falls yeah. out of the airplane, big obvious yeah. dummy. When he drops the flipped fully, car. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a handful of those. There's uh, some really bad green screen. Mm-hmm. Uh. They're in the airplane, and the green screen. It's like I don't think it's green screen. I think it's roto. And he's just got the thickest black line on the side <laughs> of his face because you can tell they're just hand yeah. painting every frame. Yeah. Um, but all of that considered still so much fun yeah so it almost it's like, more fun yeah yeah it almost makes it feel like they were just like eh, no one's here for that <laughs> who yeah. cares yeah <laughs> it's fine <laughs> it's totally fine and and like yeah it's competence on a technical level but it's like that's not the only metric you know so it's hard yeah, yeah. because it, if because commando in a lot of ways feels more competent because like they knew how to keep they understood the pacing of like we need action or joke 
and we need creativity mm-hmm. within the action. Again, even the mall fight scene, like I was engaged in those action scenes. When I was watching Rambo, that last half an hour, it's like my eyes started rolling in the back of my head because I was like, I just mm-hmm. don't care. <laughs> I don't know where we are. I don't know who any of these people are who are getting shot. One fun thing that they both do is they're both from the school of if a grenade does not land directly at your toes, you're fine. Like <laughs> shrapnel does not exist. Oh my um, God. Commando it, does it, have him get shrapneled a little bit, but it's kind of a minor inconvenience where, like, grenades have a kill radius of, like, 30 meter, and meters. And it's Rambo, too, where he's, he's like, running through the river. Right. Yeah. And then he, like, swan dives as he's, like, <laughs> dropping this, like... Like someone's watching. <laughs> ...bomb on him, and he's, like... Poof, and then they're just, oh. like, <laughs> they're well, just like the, shooting at the water, like, all crazy. Well, and the and one like, big is? explosion, too, with the helicopter that tries to drop, like, basically a bomb on him. <laughs> then he takes over the helicopter, and yeah, it's got machine but, guns. Well, it's it's got oh my God. rocket launchers. That's where the sweaty wrestling almost starts. It's yeah. the way he takes over the helicopter, too, is that, for some reason, they drop really low to the water and then all of a sudden he's underneath and he's like Rah! and he like jumps up and like yanks that guy out it's like how which is so great because like if it had all the machine guns on it the whole time why didn't they shoot him that way why did they slowly try to go over him and hover a bomb right on him yeah. and then the bomb explodes and like you're talking about continuity or well, it's not continuity but it's like you pan back you can very clearly see that they have just poured gasoline on every row of that yeah <laughs> it was that like river. well and it, it was like a waterfall thing. Yeah. Yeah. too where it's like obviously like you it wasn't just one bomb right there's like it's like there's sources. multiple explosions <laughs> happening across each tier of this waterfall like it's not just one no rocks falling no water being pushed anywhere it's all gasoline yeah it's awesome <laughs> Judge's verdict, our final round here. So, uh, which one do you think handled the concept better? So, you want to go first? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm so torn because obviously, Commando, a million times more enjoyable because sure. of the tone. Um, but I, I think it's my feelings for Rambo that I developed when, from the yeah. first movie carried over and I still kind of care about the guy and it was still really enjoyable for me to watch him do all this stuff again. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm like sitting at a, at commando. I just, <laughs> <laughs> so as far as like them doing the job of yeah. like one man army, I'm going to go with the statistics yeah, and go with Commando because he yeah. killed more people. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. I'm with it. Yeah, I, I, I would say Commando as well in, in the one, one man army trope um, or the one man army aspect of, uh, of the comparisons. Um, yeah. Also because he was basically fighting a small country. <laughs> A, right. a fictional country of Val Verde or whatever, right? Yes. So he Sounds really like was that. an army versus army. <laughs> right. Also, like I might just jump in one more time. Arnold in Commando went alone and went on his own accord. Mm-hmm. Rambo was taken there. Mm. So okay. it's really like, like Arnold took it under, sorry, Johnny Matrix yeah. <laughs> needed to save his daughter. Rambo mm. was asked to do a thing and then was brought to a horrible place that he has PTSD from. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right, right. So, <laughs> yeah, horrible. It well, no, not is. like a it's, it's horrible for him. Yeah, no, no, it's horrible for him. Horrible, That's what I, yeah. yeah, it's kind of dark yeah. when you think about it. Yeah. yeah. Arnold <laughs> like, even geared himself. Yeah. yeah. He got his own equipment and everything. Yeah. He didn't need well, anybody. He gets, <laughs> he gets to walk away at the end, and the guy's like, next time. And he's like, there will be no next time, basically, or whatever he says. He's like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like gets to choose. Like, and then he's with the girl. Choice. Yeah. We're mm-hmm. like, yeah, it definitely. Uh, John Rambo walks off into like hell, <laughs> like the yeah. hell I was living in before. You know, mm-hmm. every day's a nightmare. What about you, Maple? Oh my God, sorry, I'm yawning. Excuse me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm also gonna pick Commando, just in terms of a one man army. I feel like, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. To play a devil's advocate. <laughs> um, Live your best life. But for, con- I actually thought all you were going to say this too. For concept, I think, I, kind of for the same reason Simone picked, um, or maybe it was George, but one of you two said that it was because he actually is fighting like an army um, at the end of the movie. I feel like the Rambo movie keeps the army thing a little more true, where the other movie, he feels a little bit more like a spy. 
who then kicks a bunch of ass. Like the first hour and a half, or the first hour, because both movies are a nice tight hour and 30. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so very nice. Uh, but the first hour, there's a lot more kind of like him sneaking around, finding guys, assassinating people. And then at mm. the end, he kind of has this big, you know, like I just kill it. It's like you're playing Splinter Cell. Um, and at the end, you decided not to do stealth anymore. Yeah, he's the stealth mission that you gave <laughs> up on. Like, all right, I'm over it. It's the final one. I'm done. Let's just shoot everyone. I have all the gear. I'm all max level. But the first one, it's like, it is that familiar kind of like, you know, it looks like Platoon because we're in Vietnam. So he's got the whole, I'm here, mm-hmm. I'm using the military gear, I'm using the helicopters, I'm shooting, you know, familiar people, <laughs> they're shooting back at me. The Russians are involved, so we're dealing with the Cold War. <laughs> so I feel like those things for me made it where it's like, conceptually, it felt a little bit more on brand, I guess, if we're going to talk about the one-man army idea. Mm. So let's start over now with which movie did you guys prefer? So this can fit, like, I think the movie was better. It was better made, or it could be, I just think it was more fun, it was more entertaining. But this is kind of like, if you're not worried about the concept, you know, which one would you watch again? Commando. <laughs> yeah, Commando. I Commando have for way me more fun with Commando. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually, Rambo 2 lost a big point for me for the exact same reason but in the opposite result as Simone. So because I love the first Rambo so much, I actually got way more disappointed with Rambo 2 right, because too. the tone and the the theme was the opposite. Right. And I mm-hmm. felt like it lost that soul. Yeah. Mm. It feels That's like actually what made me like character. less. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I'll have so to it had the opposite effect on me. Well it's true, George. Like you make a really good point. Like yeah, he he's it's I'm I really am clicking on to the first movie still when I watch the second one. <laughs> yeah, like, give me something. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's how we felt when we first watched the first Rambo and the first Rocky. Because like yeah. go before going into those two movies, my image of mm-hmm. Stallone is the the Meat muscle head. bound meathead shoot him up guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I guess the subsequent movies got bigger, made him international famous. And then we watched the first Rocky and first Rambo, and we were so shocked. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, absolutely right. So that's why yeah. I say, like, I think to an extent he's kind of the thinking man's Schwarzenegger. People mm-hmm. compare them all the time because of uh Sly's follow-up movies, mm-hmm. but I don't think Schwarzenegger has a single Rocky. I don't think he has a single first blood. Um no. <laughs> uh that looks like a narrow victory to me of Commando. I believe we have well, actually, hold on, there's more than three of us now. Let's see. So <laughs> there was three votes <laughs> got on the counts. <laughs> yeah, got it count. Three votes on concept for Commando, I believe. Mm-hmm, and yeah. one on concept for uh Rambo. And then yeah. I think all four of us said Commando for yeah. for enjoyability. And I just I don't think it's even a contest man that movie is just fun (laughs) all throughout and it would be harder for me if maybe rambo was more fun in a way that felt purposeful where maybe i'm laughing at commando but there's just really not a lot of fun to be had Mm -hmm. in rambo and that's fair because not every movie is supposed to be fun no no but i don't know what it really did want from me i guess i'm supposed to think it's cool but there's so such long stretches where nothing really kind of happens like you're saying Mm -hmm. if you're talking about if if a movie uh, leans t- more towards politics like was the topic handled that in too. a way yeah. that mm-hmm. is uh beneficial to not only the film itself but the topic and do they carry each other well There's something and interesting is, it, to say. is it a movie that's good enough to push the, the topic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that I believe sums it up. That's our <laughs> thoughts on the two movies. Uh we got a winner here with Commando. Commando. And yeah. Cinebinge, where can the people find you? Uh, <laughs> He's go, like, go, oh, yeah, go, to, go to YouTube and search for Cynic Binge at the top. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can see more. <laughs> I just noticed something. Doesn't Commando have two M's? It does. <laughs> it does. It's been... <laughs> so... <laughs> awesome, guys. Awesome. All right. I had a blast. All right. Thank you I so did too. Yeah, this is great. Fun. You guys are yeah. so much fun. <laughs> yeah. right, awesome. Thank awesome. You so much. Super glad to hear. Yeah. So thanks so much for awesome. hanging out. And yeah. thanks for having us. Well, just tell everybody bye. Yeah. Bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs>